Okay, I think it's a good time to log in now. Go, 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 go. Um, Everyone, pants. retribution up, retribution up. My name's Rindy, and you all might already be wondering, how did I get in this situation? Well, it's a long story, and for starters, I'm a hardcore Iron Man and a defense peer. I'm going for completionist goals on this account as an Iron Man defense peer, but more importantly, strength bonus. I'm trying to currently get 43 strength bonus so I can hit twos while non-potted with a poison weapon on this account. Yeah, you heard me right. I said twos. That's because I'm one attack and one strength, and everything on this account is very difficult. That's why I'm going to be going for items and completionist goals on this account that less than a handful or sometimes even no other Iron Man defense peer has even acquired much less hardcore Iron Man defense peer. So today I'm taking on my riskiest task yet, and that is trying to find a method in order to kill Rex on this level 40 hardcore Iron Man account without dying, much less get there through all the NPCs and multi-combat areas without dying. So this is going to be a very stressful episode indeed, and we're going to see step by step how I break this down and find a final method to kill this boss frequently enough to reliably get a Berserker Ring and then possibly imbue it for the plus 8 strength bonus it gives. So without further ado, I welcome you all back to the Defense Saga series. In this series, we're building the ultimate defense pure Iron Man with quests and items that no other account in the game has, all in the name of Fashionscape and having the greatest trophy build account on RuneScape. For all these items, we're turning the impossible possible. I've actually gotten banned on this account for actions that they said I did, but I didn't do. So this is the second rendition of the account, and our final goal is to complete Jad with one attack and one strength. But first, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Athletic Greens. I've recently been taking more of an interest in my personal health as I get older, and this sponsor was perfect for me because AG1 is a nutritional drink I've been consuming every single day. It helps promote my gut health with a lot of probiotics built into the product, and I've noticed a lot fewer issues with overall stomach pain and indigestion I was getting on a daily basis. Throughout the day as well, I've just felt like I had a lot more energy, and the taste is honestly not that bad. It looks green, but it tastes like a hint of vanilla and it has a little bit of sweetness to it, but not too much. There are tons of benefits with this drink, including your daily vitamins and tons of herbal supplements that allow you to be calm and productive throughout the day. At least, I've noticed this. It's great for your brain health too. It has vitamin B6, vitamin B12, folate, magnesium, green tea extract, and a lot more. It's great for energy and endurance. There's vitamin K2, manganese, riboflavin, vitamin B12, B5, and zinc. They also sell this product called AGD3K2, which has vitamin D3 in it, which is great for people like me who don't go outside of their house very often. I love this because it's a liquid vitamin. It's not harsh on the stomach and it's easy to consume one drop daily. They sell AG1 in pre-packeted daily measured doses, or you can just use the scoop, one scoop a day, one minute a day, every day, that's all you need. Click my link to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health. Alright, I know I've already recapped a lot just in the intro of this video, but here's a tiny bit more. The last video in this series, I was actually going for the Draconic Visage through killing Iron Dragons using a very select alt method, which allowed me to finally, after 1,000 hours and over 13,000 Iron Dragons, get the drop, as well as I got the smithy level, and we smithed that shield and got an extra plus one strength bonus versus the Iron KP Spear. So we did have an upgrade last episode and we plan to have an upgrade this episode as long as we can find a method to get the Dagonoth Rex to kill Dagonoth Rex and actually survive Dagonoth Rex. And just a little bit of a flex here, I did some more research and I believe I am the only Iron Man defense peer currently in the game, much less hardcore Iron Man defense peer, that has that Dragon Fire Shield and that has gotten the drop from Iron Dragons. It took a lot of time, so I'm not surprised, but also, you know, once again, we're going for Fashionscape and a unique standard here on this account, so this puts a good precedent on that with just what happened in the last episode. So my original plan 
for actually doing this was to just pay a booster using boosting services which are legal in runescape because no one logs on your account they just help you out with a lot of their accounts and I was going to basically just pay a booster to carry me through the Waterbirth Dungeon Cave, but I wanted a booster to carry me there and just aggro all the NPCs on the way there and possibly even just figure out the method for me, you know, and kill Rex and, and all of this with all of his accounts. So all I had to do was really sit back, relax, and just follow his instructions. Little did I know, finding someone like this would be very hard to do and someone who was willing to do this more specifically. So like always, original plans don't always come to fruition, and it was hard to work out timing. We had to do a very large task in a small amount of time where our schedules matched up. As well, I had to help him do some research with Rex and how to kill it, because he had never taken on a task as specific as this, although he had dealt with Rex in the past. So we did work together in a lot of these solutions. For starters, I had to get past all the rooms just to get to Dagonoth Kings once again, and the worst part of routing this would be the Wallasakis because they max hit a 30 with magic, and yeah, I'm one magic, meaning I am one magic defense. And this is in multi, so they could all stack me out in a tick and ruin my hardcore status. We figured out by not waiting 10 minutes and instantly grabbing their aggression on some of the boosters' accounts that they would not switch aggression even in multi areas and therefore my hardcore would be safe passing through these areas. So he also utilized this method inside the other rooms with the Dagonoth because there could be a very unlikely situation where I could get stacked out by them as well even though I do have 85 defense currently on this account. Alright, this might be a little bit unnecessary, but you know what? We're staying a hardcore today, so we made it. But the worst part was the actual boss NPCs and the boss room itself. Now this was a multi-combat room, and there's a mage and range boss being Supreme and Prime. Prime is the magic NPC in this area, and it can max hit a 50. I'm also, once again, one magic, so I have no magic defense bonus and can easily get stacked out with this as well as Supreme, which ranges you and maxes 30s, much less Rex, which maxes 26s. Luckily, Rex is the boss we have to kill for the Berserker Ring drop, and it maxes the least as well we have defense levels as well as defense bonus to combat some of his hits. But possibly we could even weaken this boss as well using the booster's alt accounts, special attacks like Dragon Warhammer and Arclight. That's because I need to hit at least one true damage on the NPC to get the drop. But where would the other damage to kill this NPC even come from? Because it is immune to venom, although not poison. You'd have to re-poison this NPC several times over, and it's got a very fast regen rate on its health which is almost actually quicker than the 6th and 5 damage poison ticks that are hitting this boss in the first place. Yeah, I couldn't even calculate how much health this thing regen before it went back up to full, but it is at least 10 health a minute versus the standard NPC that regens 1 health per minute. Plus, oh yeah, we still have to deal with the range and mage Dagonoth King bosses, which are in the room and it's multi-combat. As well, there's spin ellipse all around that can max hit tens, although rare, they can stack me out and possibly kill me. What we found as well, back to Rex, is that he has 255 defense bonus and a massive defense level. And this is a real problem because it's an actual 0.28% chance to hit this NPC with my normal stats. And that's where the booster and all these accounts would have came into play because he could have used these to then, you know, once again, Dragon Warhammer spec, arc like spec, its defense all the way back down. But guess what? Not only does this NPC's HP regenerate at 10 per minute or more, all of its other stats do as well, including its defense. So I have to get a hit off extremely quick on this NPC before any other player does, and I have to make sure this NPC is regened all the way back up to full HP before I can get that hit off, or else it does not count as my Iron Man drop. As well, I, as soon as I get this hit off, I somehow have to finish the rest of its HP off before it heals back up to full within like 5 seconds, with possibly some weird method that involves still allowing my Iron Man to have the kill credit. This is a very complex problem to solve already at this point, and me and the booster were just testing theories back and forth until we finally had something that worked. Maybe we can use that region of its HP being so quick to our advantage at some point. Maybe we can take the range and mage in PC back far enough to where they get out of the aggression zone of the hardcore Iron Man. 
maybe there's a form of damage that actually doesn't count or null a hardcore Iron Man or Iron Man's kill credit. I don't know, let's keep this in the back of our minds. So I found the booster with the most experience with Rex, and that was the same guy who helped Kemp Q do his 10 HP Iron Man and get his B ring. Although Kemp Q had a cannon as well as stats, I'm one attack and one strength, which makes this problem a little bit more difficult to solve. Despite the fact that I was going to have to pay this booster almost 100 mil an hour to do something as ridiculous as this to help me, it was going pretty well. And back on the point, 100 mil an hour actually is a pretty consistent rate, especially when they're doing something as crazy as this. For instance, I saw him on Discord screen sharing and he was having to massively control like 16 accounts interactively and it looked like something I couldn't even do myself and he had the computing power for it and all of that and this dude was insane and we had some great times, okay? It was definitely worth it, but he didn't even charge me on the investigation part of, you know, looking into how we were going to do this except for 100 initial mil. Possibly because I was contributing some ideas as well, even though he was the man controlling 16 accounts at once. And possibly because, um, well, we never found a solution on how to kill Rex. What? Yeah, we didn't do this any further, and there's a reason for it, and I don't blame him, but it's basically thanks to a lot of the boosting community who, for some reason, found out rumors, you know, that he was helping me. And they told him, and this is to be fair to him, like, I would be paranoid too. I don't want to lose, you know, my 20 plus accounts I've spent hundreds of hours on because I'm associating with someone. That, that makes total sense on his part. They told him that I'm probably going to be paying him with duped GP. Yes, over two years later, the stupid libel is still affecting me. Thanks, Jagex, by the way. So, it looks like I'm going to have to do this on my own or mainly on my own possibly with the help minimally from some friends because i don't want to waste their time with so I, I, i'm going to have to rely on myself once again to figure all of this out figure the rest of it out because we didn't actually come to a conclusion we never killed the boss not even once after all this time and we had some ideas luckily that are going to put forward into the actual method and are going to help me out later on but i'm going to have to pretty much solo this task now so no i wasn't paying with duped gp I don't dupe GP, hopefully if I am, Jagex would have banned me by now, and uh, again, because it's been two years, right? So anyways, uh, I don't have time to dupe GP, I don't have interest, I just want to make unique accounts. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that, I don't need to get into the drama again on that, but it's still beating me alive to this day. Alright, now it's my turn to take a step up and log into possibly 16 accounts at once. Have friends possibly log into some more because I'll find out later down the road that 16 accounts won't even be enough. So it's not like I was completely clueless at this point. I kind of had an idea of what needed to be done. I needed to separate out Prime and Supreme from Rex, pull them away from my hardcore Iron Man, I needed to guide my account safely through the Dagonoth caves, and I needed to kill Rex. But how was I going to kill Rex? Well we did some experimenting earlier with the booster and some of that led me to some ideas which I would later have to take on. So Vengeance and Recoils, even though they are neutral damage, will totally null the kill credit from an Iron Man, but there are some other forms of damage. Similar to Venom and Poison, which I used in the Iron Dragon method you saw in the last episode in order to get a Draconic Visage with alts, well, Retribution was another form of damage that would not null the Iron Man kill count. Well, at least in most places. Most bosses, when they attack another player, it totally nulls the kill for the Iron Man. Luckily, this wasn't one of these boss NPCs since it is so old. As long as you don't actually do any damage to Rex, the Iron Man can still get the kill credit even though Rex focuses on other accounts inside the cave. Although we did find out if Rex actually kills an account with Retribution, it does no damage. So if we were able to find a way to trigger death maybe inside of Rex's body before he even attacks them, then Retribution could still be set off but also, the kill would not be nulled for the Iron Man. As it turns out though, well, trying to set off 
many, many accounts inside of Dagonoth Rex's body without a singular one of them getting attacked by the NPC would be very difficult to pull off. And uh, yeah, I forgot, you actually don't trigger retribution damage if you manage to kill yourself by your own hands in the game. It only happens if an NPC or poison kills you. Or maybe venom. But would I even need retribution to kill this boss? Maybe not. I mean, I could lower his defense all the way down with a few alts using arc lights once again and dragon war hammers, and by taking another two alts to save spot prime and supreme away from my account sitting at the ladder. From here I could possibly poison again and again Rex, but like I said his defense goes up extremely quick and it's harder and harder to poison him as it goes on and his HP regens extremely fast. I do have a lot of recoils bank so I could combine recoil damage and poison damage, but I would just need to kill him as fast as possible and I would need as many recoils to go off on this NPC as fast as possible for the chance to actually double poison hit him before his defense level gets too high for me to hit anything with my one attack and strength, even super potted. So I found a shop in Berthorpe, which actually has two shops that main the exact same shop. One is in the downstairs of the Berthorpe's games room, the other is the Toad and Chicken Inn inside of Berthorpe. Yes, they share the same supply of Wizard Mind Bombs and Dwarven Stouts, and this supply is shared with main accounts. So what did I do? Well, I decided to go to the GE on a main account and stock the shop to the exact number being 10 so it's not overstocked, with noted wizard mind bombs and dwarven stouts. Why I needed all of these and why I needed them fast was because they lower defense. I could run through the caves with an army of my other accounts protecting me with low defense and then log out to hold this defense level and then go inside finally and kill Rex as fast as possible in order to deal more recoil damage now that my defense is lowered to around 25 and therefore possibly repoison him at a lower HP while his defense is still low. So after buying thousands of these drinks, lowering my defense all the way to zero, making the long route with other accounts, protecting me along the way all by myself, then going all the way to Dagonoth Rex, luring off the other two NPCs, then prepping everything with arc lights and dragon war hammers to lower his defense down to one to be able to hit him to possibly get poison hits off as fast as possible, as well as him then getting recoils off on me as fast as possible because my defense was pretty much zero at this point, I still could not kill him fast enough with poison and recoils combined along with his lowered stats. He just regenerated his attack, strength, and defense too quickly. Eventually he started hitting me extremely hard and I would run out of food as well. I also couldn't get off enough damage on him through poison because his defense kept going up and the recoils were out DPSing his HP regen, but the poison was not. This method was just not fast enough for a kill on Rex, but it could get him down to around half, if not even a third of his HP bar. Maybe if I was extremely lucky, I could have gotten one KC this way, but for one kill, this entire method, it just was not feasible to take on. Another idea I had was just to not lower his stats at all. I would need even less accounts for this and there would be less stress on me not trying to lose my hardcore status therefore and not having to multitask as much. But basically Rex's magic level and his magic defense is one. He has none of it. Luckily, Poison Dynamite I had heard was a magic based attack but it rolls off your highest accuracy bonus that's not magic. Even if I had a staff on and had max magic bonus as my accuracy, no, it would never roll off magic. Same with a cannon. It will only roll off your range bonus, slash bonus, crush bonus, or stab bonus. It will never roll off your magic bonus, and therefore it will not roll against the NPC's magic defense bonus, even though it is a magic based attack. I tested this with black demons and magic bonus because black demons have almost no magic defense but they have high in every other defense and it confirmed my beliefs here. So this once again was going to be a no-go for the Rex method using poison dynamite. Again. So at least by this time, I knew what worked and didn't work. I knew that we would have to rely on retribution. Exactly how, I was not sure. But I knew how to lure back Supreme and Prime away from Rex and keep Rex safe spotted at the ladder as well as I knew how to lower his stats down, then wait for his HP to regenerate back, before even attempting to get at least a one hit off with the Iron Man. But how would I trigger retribution inside of this cave, and how would I do it without ruining the Iron Man's kill potential? 
back to the idea of Venom setting off Retribution. So first of all, I calculated the average amount of accounts I would need in order to set off Retribution and take down Rex's entire HP. This would be between 30 and 35. That is, accounts, yes, with 70 to 77 prayer, giving 18 or 19 damage points from Retribution. And I would Venom these accounts, possibly by using an account with a Trident or a Toxic Staff of sorts, which then bursted them inside of PvP worlds on their route to the actual Dagonoth King Cave. And the people controlling these accounts would have to make sure they were Venom before continuing on throughout the cave, as well as eat and somehow survive the entire multi-combat, high-level NPC Waterbirth dungeon. So what would I need? I would need a lot of accounts, and now while I'm doing this pretty much solo without trying to bug all of my friends to help me out at every possible moment except when it's totally needed and we're finally killing Rex, I'm gonna go build those accounts and spend the next month doing so. Seriously though, why couldn't that guy just have taken my fucking money? So these Supreme and Prime tanks had HP capes and regions, I did borrow them from friends. I went ahead and had brews on all of these accounts and some restores because I needed my prayer up at all times and I could therefore out regenerate the spin ellipse and pretty much stay here for about a couple hours before I had to re-gear these accounts. I had another 6 accounts that actually had spec transfer that were waiting around the ladder to spec transfer my main account with a D Warhammer and an Arclight. These were also borrowed from friends. I then had that 7th account over by the ladder which did have the D Warhammer and Arclight and max attack bonuses and I would start with the D Warhammer to get its defense down and eventually switch to the Arclight as it was more efficient at lower levels to lower the defense of this NPC. It also lowered the attack and strength meaning my hardcore wouldn't be taking as much damage and therefore risking as much possibility of death. I would then use Rex's health regeneration rate that was extremely quick that we talked about earlier which was a nuisance to my advantage. He would now regen to full HP with around 5 defense left, as well as having a very low attack and strength level. This rapid HP regeneration would once again be used to my advantage, because I would switch this main into a Serpentine Helm as well as a Toxic Trident and throw an Airstrike. 9 times out of 10 if I threw the Airstrike and the Poison Splat didn't land till a few ticks, he would already be regenerated to full before the poison started to tick down. I could test this by my hardcore Iron Man attempting to go and stab it and seeing if I had the cancel symbol on this NPC, meaning the kill credit would not go to my Iron Man. If he did not regen his health too fast, which was a very rare instance, I would just go up the ladder to null the Venom damage because when you go outside of the area at this time in RuneScape, you could totally kill the Venom damage by getting out of the NPC's aggression and taking aggression on another account, which we saw on my last video with Iron Dragons. I'd then go back down the ladder on this main and just wait for his HP to go up yet again, get his defense levels down a little bit more with some Arclight specs, wait for his HP to go back up to full yet again, and then send another airstrike with the Serpentine Helm, hoping that I would hit a 1 and that he would regen his full HP back up again. I did this because I wanted to hit a 1 while retaining him at a lower HP than full, so that the kill credit would be awarded to my Iron Man and so that he wouldn't go back to full and it went to nobody. Now once the poison started ticking down because Rex is immune to Venom, it switches over to poison damage, I could then actually hit the 1 on my hardcore Iron Man as long as it counted towards the kill credit. Next I would just need to send down a horde army of retribution accounts and this is where the account building on my end came into play. I didn't get to borrow these accounts because none of my friends had these oddly built accounts that could survive entire routes through the water birth dungeon as well as had high prayer levels to do retribution damage from around 18 to 19 per account. So I built 35 accounts. That's right, I spent the next 3-4 to four weeks AFKing at Sand Crabs on two computers with, yes, 35 accounts. I also spent a lot of money on them through Dragon Bones at the Chaos Altar, getting them between 70 and 77 prayer so they could hit decent with retribution. That's because retribution damage goes off how high your prayer level is, and I thought that was a good number. Besides the prayer level, I got all their combat stats to around between base 50s and base 60s. That gave my friends who were multi-logging and controlling these accounts at least a good shot at running through the entire Waterbirth dungeon, while Venomed as well through the PvP world shown earlier. 
Next, they would log out, log back in whenever I said go, 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 which is right after Rex was poisoned and I hit the one. So although I did make these accounts, I had a lot of friends help when it came to the actual kill credits. And once again, shout out to these people because each of these kills took about 15 to 20 minutes each. And I myself personally was on, I would say, 12 to 13 accounts. And then between all of them, they were on 35 retribution alts, navigating through the caves, and dying on cue over and over again. Sometimes on cue, not every time. And well, the whole process looked a lot like this. Okay, maybe not that epic, but it still looked pretty epic. Look at this. Fresh off the boat, ready for another DK trip. It's gonna be a long ride there. Heading through the Waterbird Dungeon safely with my guide account. Sending in the Prime and Supreme Lures. You can lure these back from any spot. I also seem to have Rex on me, which I'll have to kill in order for it to respawn in a better spot. Alright, we've got Prime lured. Now let's lure Supreme back to the wall. Rex is being killed. Sending down the special attack slash Rex luring ult. Got the crystal bow head off. Going to the safe spot at the ladder. Now have the NPC safe spotted, so I'm sending in the special attack alts. to safe spot each one of these spec transfer alts behind the ladder while my other account is taking the damage. Alright, now everything's in place. Let's go ahead and pull the two Prime and Supreme accounts to a spot where I can actually reach my main account with spec transfer. Alright, we're starting a spec transfer cycle now to the main account. D Warhammer hits, then Arc Light hits. We have Staff Spy going on one account to check its HP and defense. We have more spec transfers going on these accounts as well. Alright, defense should be pretty low now. Now it's time to focus possibly on his attack and strength levels. More arc light specs have been hit, so now we're gonna go ahead and switch into our Venom and attempt to poison him since Venom switches the poison here. Alright, we successfully hit a 1 and his HP is regenerated. Didn't need to reset the Venom this time. So our Defense Spear is now attempting to hit a 1 after his HP had regenerated. We hit a 2, better than a 1. Send in the boys. Now I'm going to 
take aggro to make sure this is my kill. So yeah, that was one singular kill, 15 to 20 minutes of kill, and a lot of effort just for that one kill. But I needed this berserker ring and I needed it bad, so we're determined to be here till we get it. About 20 to 30 hours had passed, and I still had no unique drops. I didn't have a warrior ring, I didn't have a dragon axe, and I didn't have what I specifically wanted, a berserker ring. Hey, but somehow I got a shield left half, which is almost as rare as a pet. Yes, finally! Berserkering, 110 KC. Now the ring drop and all these unique drops are 1 in 128. I got of a lot of unique drops like Fremenic Helms and Shields and a lot of useless things I couldn't even wield because I can never do Fremenic Trials because that gives attack XP. But I did finally get that Berserker ring very close to the rate. I kept going a little bit further, trying to get maybe a Dragon Axe because that's like an impossible thing to get from Wintertide and it could help me in the future with woodcutting on this account. Who knows, once again we're going for a completionist goal on this account, but more so the strength bonus is the very most important thing that I will be looking for throughout this series. And I got tired of only getting 3-4 to four kills per hour and eventually called off the hunt for Dagonoth Rex. We got what we needed, we got the Berserker Ring. So let's go imbue it. Luckily I had just gotten 40 combat by AFK and Monks for nearly a year and about 100 days of playtime at 2k defense XP per hour. This was 85 defense and 73 HP. I could now get into Soul Wars because Soul Wars requires 40 combat and there is a very fast way of boosting with two accounts Soul Wars points. I can get around I'd say, I don't know. 150 to 200 points per hour with the limitations of this account, meaning I was able to imbue this ring within just two hours game time. And there we have it, eight strength bonus from a singular ring. Yeah, it was a lot of effort and a lot of problem solving, but that's what I love most about this game. So here we are once again, we're only one strength bonus off being able to hit twos with the poison weapon and possibly taking on Jad in the fight caves as soon as possible. But that one strength bonus is going to be the worst yet to come. And I have a few more goals in mind before we even take on that challenge, such as maxing out my defense and hit points, getting some possibly better defense gear, and of course, just having fun while doing it all. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. It took me a lot of time to produce this. I wanted to give a shout out to the Skull for making a lot of the animations in this video. He's a great graphics designer. And I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my friends who helped me actually get those Rex kills, who loaned me some of those max accounts with just this year and Din's Bulwarks on them. And lastly, thank you to everyone who watched this video, all of my supporters. If you guys did enjoy this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I appreciate all your support. And I'll see you here very shortly. I have another episode pre-recorded and in the editing bin already. Unless I get distracted by more time-sensitive benips or hospital trips.